Welcome back to the show. I'm Jenny McCarthy Wahlberg. Joining me for this uh, amazing segment is Donnie Wahlberg. Donnie. Donald Bartholomew Alistair. I still got 93 names. You came all the way down from the tower. I came down. I had to. And why is that? Because this guy is, uh, he's a gift. And he his, uh, I, li- I hear his voice every day. <laughs> It started with Jenny listening to his videos, and now um, I set my daily intention with him every morning, and uh, he's just awesome, and I just wanted to be here for this, and also for your listeners, because I know they're always looking for good stuff to help them you know, feel good and, and be present and be awake. And this is, um, this is the guy. This is the guy. You guys are always wondering like who I listen to. And I talk about Eckhart and Byron Katie. Mm -hmm. This guy, I'm finally going to say his name. So get your pen and pencil or whatever you want to write with Aaron Abke, Aaron Abke. Welcome to our show. Thank you guys so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Yeah. So, um, you know, I do love my self-help uh, videos. I, I probably, um, what I would maybe call addicted to them a little bit. And you were one of the first people that said in one of your many videos, you know, be mindful that you're just not constantly watching back-to-back self-help videos and not applying mm. what you're learning in real life. And I was like, oh my God, he's talking to me. And... Um, and you know, and 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 truth be told, it's like I do love information. I love finding um, and curating stuff, especially for this show. But you know, for myself too. And then I, when you said that though, it was a light bulb that said, why not just take one piece and 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 focus on that? Because sometimes I feel like I learn so much, it becomes overwhelming that I just kind of check out and become unconscious. Mm-hmm. So I started to take your teachings and just focus on one particular thing at a time, which mm-hmm. I'll get into. Um, so well, let's talk about um, the shift in consciousness, waking up. Obviously, a lot of people have been feeling it over the past few months. You talk about shadow work on your on your site. Um, but let's dive into um, people that have that desire that you talk about um, of wanting to uncover these old belief systems, these old traumas to in order to ascend. What if you see yourself getting triggered over and over again? You're aware of it, but you can't figure out where it came from. Even if you've gone to therapy, even if you've gone to hypnotist, how do you, how does one unlock the vaults that are, seem to be so blocked? Excellent question. Um, you know, there's no one right answer to this. Um, but I would say that knowing firstly that all suffering is an error in self-perception is the most important thing. So if, if something triggers me, it's not the external environment. It's not what the person did or said. Uh, my suffering is solely dependent on the way I see myself. And of course in miracles talks a lot about this idea that we look inside of ourselves first and decide how we want to see ourselves and then project that world outside of us. And then mm. we believe what we're seeing is actually there right? Oh, look at all these mean people saying such mean things to me. Nobody loves me. Nobody accepts me. And it's all in our own imagination. So until you know that you can only suffer at the hands of your own imagination, then you will continue projecting all your problems outside of you, right? So firstly, uh, removing that belief in victimization that I'm a victim to what happens outside of me is number one, because then you can look inside and say, all right, what, what am I seeing in myself that I'm not loving? What part of me am I not giving love to? And we can get into like, you know, examples of that if you want to give people a little more logistics. Of course. On it. But yeah, that's kind of where it begins and ends. Right. So what if someone has been hurt, has been, you know, gone? Because a lot of people will say, like someone might say, you know, a listener might say, well, I was robbed or I was, you know, <clears throat> beat up or something, or my ex-husband was abusive. Like how do, how does someone reconcile that? You know, if they're mm-hmm. actually have been the victim of something horrifying. Right. Well, it has to begin by knowing yourself on the eternal dimension, right? As long as you believe you're just a finite entity, a body, a person living in a world, then you have to keep suffering because that person believes it's separate, right? 
separate from its source, separate from others. So that means everything becomes a potential threat. So forgiveness really is the path to freedom. And forgiveness is often misconstrued to mean uh, overlooking the truth, kind of mm -hmm. like you were alluding to, meaning, but that person really did do that thing to me. You know, how can I just overlook that? And that's not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is knowing who you are. And from that reference point, realizing nobody can ever take my value from me. Nobody can ever harm what I am because I'm an eternal being. So if I believe somebody has stolen some of my value from me, then I require healing in some area of how I see myself. So if I was robbed, for example, projection means projection does not mean I'm causing all the actions of others which is often how it's misconstrued to mean sometimes. Projection means the way I interpret the actions of others is a reflection on me. So if I hate my attacker, if I seek vengeance against them, that means that inside of myself, I seek vengeance against, against parts of me. I'm not comfortable with who I am. But on the other hand, if I've seen all those parts of me, the parts of me that are selfish, the parts of me that have stolen from others, and I've forgiven those parts of me and reconciled them, then I can project that same forgiveness onto my attacker mm -hmm. and I can see their actions for what they are. This is a lost person. This is a hurting person. This is a person who doesn't know who they are. And so they're just doing whatever they can in their own means to find peace of mind, to find happiness, mm -hmm. whatever they think that is, right? And so if I hold that against them, I'm really just binding myself to the same illusion that they are, right? I'm as insane as they are if I take their actions personally. So when I stop taking the actions of others personally, then I can see them for what they are and actually have compassion on them. That's the key. And that is... I think one of the hardest things for people, including myself, to remember is that who I am part. Um, it's when our ego takes us away and, you know, we become identified with our thoughts and our roles and so on and so forth. And that's where I think meditation is so important to come back yeah. to that stillness, to remembering that divine, formless spirit that you are, that we are. Um, but it's I if am. you, it, I am, if if you haven't been ever ever been able to connect to that is it impossible to do what you said yes which yeah. is why you can't ever feel guilty right for your actions like if you attacked somebody in return uh if you did anything in your past that you say i shouldn't have done that that's that's actually also a form of insanity right because nobody can behave above their current level of consciousness so what you have to accept is that everything you've done in your life ever was the best you could have done at that time. And how do we know that that's true? You can just ask yourself the question, is my one true desire at all times simply to be happy and have peace? Everyone on planet Earth says, yes, right? We all want to be happy. So that means you're always doing what you think will lead you to happiness. Whether or not it actually does is a totally different story, right? But that's how we spiritually grow. We take actions, they have consequences, we learn, and we integrate that new knowledge into our awareness of self. So whatever you've done in your past, you have to forgive yourself for. But on the flip side of the coin, that also means you must forgive others for their actions as well. And instead of seeing them as evil, you need to see them as simply being ignorant or blind to the truth. <sighs> so well said. We're talking to Aaron Abke. Now I'm going to put it